Bless the Lord on this Mother's Day morning. God is faithful. God is great. I'm excited to be back with you. It's been a couple weeks, but I'm excited to be here. God is good. Happy Mother's Day to you. I pray that you have started this day off in a great way, celebrating in a great way, loving on Jesus in a great way, waking up this morning thankful, grateful, excited, just just hype about the fact that God has given you another day to breathe his air, another day to fulfill his purpose, another day to realize that this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Another day to be a disciple maker, another day to build his kingdom, another day to give him praise, another day to be thankful, another day to bless his name. I hope that you're waking up this morning and you are excited about life itself and that God has given you an opportunity to make impact in somebody else's life, to make impact in your family's life, to make impact and be able to appreciate the life that God has given you. It may not be everything that you thought it would be. It may not be perfect yet. It may not be absolutely everything that you desire in this moment, but you are grateful for the fact that God has given you another day. You are grateful for the fact that God allows you to exist in this point in time, that God has a plan and purpose for your life. You are just excited and grateful and thankful that today is another day that you get to be here. I know that's you. I know you're ready. I know you're excited. And I'm just thankful that God allowed us to be together in this moment. We can't speed past moments like they not special. This moment is special. The people in your life is special. You are special. Your family is special. This moment in time is special. This is a special day. And on top of that is Mother's Day. And so I'm thankful that we get to worship together. As we get ready to go in to worship together and we we will get into the Word of God, I want to open it up that we be able to pray for those who uh, are in your life that God has allowed to cross your path, those who God has allowed you to overhear things about, those who God has placed on your heart, whether far or near, whether it's people that you know or not. It could be leaders in our community, leaders in our government, leaders that are, are fulfilling the plan and purpose for their life in our school systems or first responders and all these different things that we could be praying for, those who are overseas, those who are deployed, those who are close to home, those who are new mothers, those who have been mothers for a long time, those who may be experiencing Mother's Day for the first time without their, their, their children being home with them. Whoever it is and whoever God has allowed to cross your path this week, I want you to take a moment as you get ready to eat for yourself with the Word of God. I just want you to pause for a moment and begin to realize and begin to reflect to see, man, who did God bring along my path this week that I can lift up in prayer? You may feel comfortable enough putting your prayer request right there online where you can drop it in the comment where you can send us a text in response to the text that you got this morning or that you can send us an email or or anything like that or you may just say this moment is special because I remember that I should be praying for this person and if that's the case then do that as we pray together call out some names if, even if you don't want to put it in the comments, if, even if you don't want to send it to us, call out their name right now, right where you are, as we get ready to lift up them to heaven and ask God to have his way in their life. Man, I'm excited about what God's about to do and what he continues to do. He's just so good, y'all. He's just so good. He is just good. He don't just do good things. He is good. And so no matter what we're facing, I want you to be excited about what God is doing. Can we pray together? Father, I thank you and I bless your name for the great things that you have done. I thank you for your anointing that is already, already saturated in this space, already translating into where they are now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for those who we are lifting up now, the names that are coming in through email, the names that are showing up in the comments, those that are being called in rooms all over this country, all over this globe today, God, as we lift up those names, as we lift up those positions, and we may not have a specific 
specific name, but we lift them up to you today, God. We ask that you have your way in their life, that you will put angels of protection around them to keep them, to lead them, to guide them, to build them up now in the name of Jesus. Those who are, are serving with their hands, those who are showing up for others, but in this moment of time, they need some strength. They need something to be poured back into them. God, I thank you that you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So God, I thank you that you're pouring back into them that life, whether it be through a friend, whether it be through a phone call, whether it be through a text message, whether it be through a direct message, whatever needs to happen for them to realize they are not alone, for them to be built back up, for them to be filled back up. God, we ask that it happen for them now. Lord, those who need endurance, God, I thank you that you're giving them that endurance. Those who need peace, God, I thank you that you're giving them that peace. Those who need healing in their body, God, if we can take a car back to its original manufacturer, why can't we take our bodies back to you, Lord? We present our bodies as the living sacrifice unto you, God. And so we ask, Father, that you would correct and heal only like you can, God. We believe that you heal today, Father. No matter what our body feels like, we believe that you're a healer, God. And we stand on your word of truth, God, believing for healing now in the name of Jesus and being able to respond in obedience to what you call us to do. So, Lord, we thank you for those who are on their journey and need direction, God, that you would give them direction like no other. Speak to them like lip to ear, God, that they may know what to do. God, we thank you for this Mother Day, Mother's Day. And God, we pray for every mother, God, every mentor, every teacher, God, every person who desired to be a mother, those who've been mother to other people, those who are first time mothers, those who have been mothers over years and years. God, we thank you for those families, for those children, because we pray for the whole family, God, today. And we honor the mothers and we ask God that you would have your way in their life, that they will be blessed above measure in every need in their life. And we thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we bless the Lord right there? Can we give him a praise? God is faithful. God is true. God is just. And I'm excited for what God's about to do. We want to make sure that you stay with us until the end. Make sure that you stay with us. Don't log off. Stay with us until the end. Just go ahead and mentally commit. If you don't mentally commit, then halfway through, you're going to be out. Mentally commit, then I'm going to stay to the end mentally commit. I'm going to stay to the end. Stay to the end. I want to make sure that you create a space that you can hear God. When you create a space, there's something special about the fact that I say, Lord, speak to me now. Lord, speak to me now. Speak to my heart, dear Jesus. Lead me and guide me, Lord Jesus, in your word today. So you create that space. This is my sanctuary today. And then we want you to make sure that you save this message because being able to come back to it and revisit it is important. Because when you come back to it Monday morning, you come back to it Sunday evening, you come back to it whenever, and you begin to rehearse, you realize that the fact that there were some things that I didn't hear the first time. I preached the message, and then sometimes when I go back and hear it, I hear something that I didn't hear the first time. And so I want you to make sure that you save this message. And then this is important as we are kingdom builders, as we are disciple makers, as we are the conduit of God's grace and love here in the earth, his hands and feet that we share this message. Bring people to church, whether it's online or in person, or you invite them to your living room. We need for you to create and share this message and say, listen, the word of God is going forth. Let's talk about it. Let's unpack it. Let's dissect it. Let's not just be something we hear in our silos, but we we hear the word and then we take a moment and we unpack it. What did you get from it? How you feel about it? Share the message with somebody today. I'm excited. We're getting ready to go on the word. Listen, stay with us. The word is coming up next. God bless you. Bless the Lord. God is faithful. We're excited to get ready to go into the Word of God. We're going to John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. John chapter 10, verses 22 through 30. I'm excited. Happy Mother's Day to you. God bless you, all the mothers out there, the mentors, the teachers, the natural mothers, the mothers who have been mothers for a long time, the mothers who are brand new mothers, mothers who are carrying their, their child right now, mothers who are going through a transitional season, mothers who are looking for guidance, mothers Mothers who are looking for truth, mothers who are excited about Jesus, we celebrate you, we love you, and we send much love your way. Happy Mother's Day to you. I hope you get celebrated in a major way. If you can't get celebrated right where you are, we celebrate you from here, and we send our love to you. And we, we are so thankful that God allowed you to be a part of our lives, that we could celebrate you on today. God is faithful, and I want you to be encouraged that God has not forgotten about you, and that he's going to do great things in your life 
and with those that you influence with your sons, with your daughters. He is going to do great things. And I'm excited. And I just believe that to the core. We're going in John chapter 10, verse 22 through 30. I'm going to be reading from the New Century Version. It says this, the time came for the feasts of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, verse 23, and Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's porch. Some people gathered around him and said, how long will you make us wonder about you? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Jesus answered, I told you already, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name show who I am. Verse 26, but you don't believe because you are not my sheep. Verse 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Verse 28, I give them eternal life and they will never die. No one can steal them out of my hand. Verse 29, my father gave my sheep to me. He is greater than all and no person can steal my sheep out of my father's hand. Verse 30, the father and I are one. I want to go, I want to go back to 24 and read 24, 25, 26, and 27, because that's where we're going to focus. How long will you make us wonder about you? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Verse 25, Jesus answered, I told you already, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my father's name show who I am. Verse 26, but you don't believe because you are not my sheep. 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So we had the outskirts of that, but that's our core that we're going to look today. If you can pray with me under the topic of listen to me. Listen to me. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you and we bless your name for the great things that you have done and continue to do. We ask for your anointing to flow now in the name of Jesus. Flow into cars, flow into homes, flow into bedrooms, flow into living rooms now in the name of Jesus. Flow to wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves. This is our sanctuary today and we ask that you just speak to our hearts like only you can. Build us up like only you can. Allow us to be all that you've called us to be. God, we thank you for the great things that you're going to do through your preached word. So, Lord, speak to our hearts today that we may hear you, understand you, and know that you are leading and guiding us in your truth. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody say, listen to me. So, as I begin to look at life and and begin to understand life and begin to observe life, not just from my perspective, but from what I've learned from other people, from what I've observed, how I've interacted with people, how I thought things were versus how they may be for somebody else. Immaturity says that the my lens and how I look to things is the absolute truth and everybody else is just a variable or that of a or an adjustment of that. But maturity says that the way that I view life may not be how everybody else views life and I can learn from my neighbor and my way is not right. It is just different. There's a distinction, but it, it is not right. It's not above. It is not the, the right way to do things. It's just how I see it based on my experiences and what I've been through and how I process and my intended goal for the things that I'm doing. And so as I grow up, I begin to observe and have interactions with people who are like me and people who are different. And I learned a lot of different things. I'll tell you what, marriage will teach you a lot of different things about the word of God. And on top of that, mothers will teach you a lot of things about the word of God. It will teach you a lot of things about God's nature. It will teach you a lot of things about this walk that we're on following Christ. One thing I realized and I learned from observing mothers is that sometimes the simplest things require preparation. That some things don't just happen that some things happen smoothly because of preparation. What I found is that simple things like getting up in the morning and going somewhere is something that doesn't just happen. But a lot of times a mother 
has set it up for success because they have prepared for the transition that's coming up ahead. Simply put, possibly Sunday morning, where the mother makes sure that things are laid out. I hear you, fathers. I put stuff out too, but we ain't talking about you today. We're talking about mothers. <laughs> that they, they lay stuff out, that they, they get stuff organized. They make sure that their kids has what they need. They make sure that when we try to transition early in the morning, that we are prepared to transition well. Because what I found out, what I assumed was you get up on you get up on Sunday morning and you can handle what you need to handle on Sunday morning and, and just go ahead or or the school day. And then I realized that in order for that to go smooth. Then you need to be prepared. Things are laid out. Things are are, are separated. Things are labeled and put here in this different places and, and all these different things. But I'm a quick study. So I realized, like, oh, I see how I go, because sometimes when I tried to do it my way, I realized that we didn't get to where we needed to get to on time because I didn't prepare the night before. But I'm a quick study. So I said, OK, cool. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to make sure it's straight. I'm going to make sure it's iron. I'm going to put it here in plain sight so they see it and all that kind of stuff. And so then they should just know what to do because it's obvious. Then I realized there's levels to this because just because you prepare doesn't mean that you can just leave them to it because what seems obvious may not be obvious to children. <laughs> what seems obvious may not be obvious to adults. What seems obvious sometimes, even though you prepared, you can't just prepare and then leave your influence out of it. You can't just prepare and not guide the experience. You can't just prepare and think because it's prepared that people are going to see and understand and know what to do and see it how you see it. Because the truth is my past experiences, my perspective, my lens that I look through coming into a situation may not be able to see what you see as obvious. It may be hidden to me because of the lens I look through. And what I found is that the lens that children look through need some guidance, even when things are in plain sight. Amen. Let's get into the word. So like, as we look here in, in the, in the Bible leading up to this, this is where we find Jesus talking about him being the good shepherd, where we find him um, addressing the, the John 10, 10, which is an iconic scripture that talks about the fact that the thief come not, but to steal, kill and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. This is the same passage where he talks about the fact that I am the door, that if you come through me, the only way to the father is through me. Um, and he talks about the fact that the sheep hear my voice. They know my voice and all these, these iconic, passages that we talk about is leading up to this moment right here. And so when we find here in the text where Jesus is at, it says the festival of dedication in a new century version, commonly known today as Hanukkah, which have been celebrating uh, the rededication of the temple. We see it in the word that it says Solomon's porch, that this is the, the celebration that's happening of this rededication of the temple. And specifically in this point and in the text, Jesus is approached by the Jews with some pressing questions in an aggressive way while he's at the festival. Mom, see, see, moms understand this because even when they're in the midst of doing, you know, fun stuff or relaxed things or just celebrating that they get questions in the middle of it. <laughs> in the middle of their Netflix movie, kids ask questions. Mama, where's this? <laughs> in the middle of them enjoying their moment, they say, hey, mama, ask this. So, you know, mothers are like, hey, I'm, I'm ready for tough questions in the middle of whatever. I just know. But, hey, I don't know what Jesus' commentary was on it. But I just know that when I'm in the middle of something, sometimes being impressed with a question that demands an answer right then is not necessarily what I want to do, not necessarily what I want to address. But Jesus finds himself being impressed by the Jews in this moment, and they come up to him it's like hey we want to talk to you right now in the middle of this festival and i love jesus because he engages many of us go through times and moments in our life where we want to know 
that we're being significant, that our life is significant, that we are walking through a point in time where we're moving towards our destiny, where we're doing what God has called us to do, where we know that our life is lining up with our purpose and we are living a significantly important life and our life is not being wasted. And we want to know the direction that we're supposed to take and what we're supposed to be doing. And and we really want to be sure about the fact that what I'm doing, my life is significant. I'm making a significant impact. I'm, I'm influencing people. I am doing what God has called me to do. I'm being successful. I want to know. And we got to be able to understand that God is calling us and pulling us towards purpose and destiny. And many times we want to know, am I doing something significant? Can I just know for sure? And so they approached Jesus because they got questions. And on the surface level, it looks as though they're asking to be clear because they say this, In 25, Jesus answered, I told you already, but you did not believe the miracles I do in my father's name show who I am. We would like to know plainly. We would like to know plainly. They were asking him earlier in the scripture. They were saying, hey, can you just tell us plainly? Are you the Messiah? Verse 23 And 24, 24 says this. Some people gathered around him and said, how long will you make us wonder about you? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And then Jesus answers them in 25 and says, I already told you, but you did not believe. Can you look at somebody and say, is there? Is there? You know, because there are some points in time where you send children to look for things, or you might be saying, I send adults to look for things and you tell them where it is and they go in and they'd be like, it ain't there. I don't see it. And I came here to tell you that it's there because you tell them like, look, I know it's there because I put it there. I know it's there because I set it up to be there. I wouldn't have sent you in there if it wasn't there. And they said, tell us plainly if you're the Messiah. And Jesus says, I already told you. The fruit is already there. It's there. All you got to do is see it. And there's some reason why you can't see it. And I want you to understand as believers not to be deterred when people don't see it. Do not be deterred when people don't see it. Do not put your identity and the metric of your success in the hands of critics. Because critics may not see it, but it don't mean that it ain't there. Somebody say it's there. What God has placed on the inside of you is there. The fact that your kid can still turn this thing around is there. The promise that God made to you is there, even though the critics may not see it. And you already said what you was believing for. You already said what you were standing on. You already got your scripture that you believe in God for. You know that God going to see you through. And even though they can't see it, and even though they don't understand it and they think you just a dreamer and they think that you just over the top is there. Somebody say is there. Even though they don't see it is there. Jesus said, I already told you. I already told you. And then he says, but you did not believe the miracles I do in my father's name show who I am. (laughs) This is what I want you to do for those who are critical in your life. Continue in the father's purpose for your life, period. Somebody say period. I know in, in, in culture it's period. It's with a T on the end, period. It's the fact that I'm going to continue in what God has called me to do, no matter what the critics say, no matter if you can see it or not, no matter if you believe in the dream or not, no matter if you understand what things are happening inside my spirit or not, no matter if you believe that my child can become this or not, no matter if you believe that my marriage can be this or not, no matter what you say to me, I'm going to stand on the word of God and the truth that he has spoken to me because I will not allow success or the metric to be placed 
in the hands of critics. I'm just going to continue in the purpose that God has for me. I can't, I don't need your approval to continue in what God has for me. I just need to keep on stepping. Somebody say, keep on stepping. And see, the fact of the matter is that Jesus comes to this conversation without him arguing. He doesn't argue back. He just points. And you can't, you can't argue when you can point. It's tough to argue when you can point. See, like when people go fishing, they be like, yo, I caught a fish, and that jank was like this big. It was, man, that jank wasn't that big. It wasn't that big. It was more like this big. Nah, man, I think it was this big. Nah, man, I don't think it was that big. I think it was this big. And they go back and forth, and they're arguing because they ain't got nothing to point to. He's like, yo, where the fish at? Oh, I threw it back. You got a picture? Nah, I ain't got no picture. I threw it back. So now it, it's ambiguous in the fact it's like, oh, well, was it this big or was it that big? Or was it kind of this big? And you got to go back and forth. And they argue about the fact of whether or not you even caught a fish in the first place. But when you can point to the fruit and just say, boom, look at this picture. Ain't nothing to be said. When you're holding the fish, ain't nothing to be said. What we got to do in our life is bear fruit to the place where you just point. Where you go, guess what? Is God a healer? Point. Is God a sustainer? Point. Can he turn things around? Point. Can he really birth this dream that's on the inside of me out? Point. To where you just point to what God has done. We overcome by the blood of the lamb, which is he can't negotiate with that. And the word of our testimony, which he can't negotiate with. I just point. point. And that's the part about it is the fact that you don't have to argue when you can point. Jesus says, I already told you. I've shown you in both word and in deed. I've shown you with what I've said and what I've done. Now I just point. Because when I can point, there truly is no argument because you see it before you. The fruit is there. The Bible tells us that you shall know them by their fruit. Many times we're trying to get and negotiate back and forth and debate back and forth these different things. It's like nobody debates fruit. Fruit speaks for itself. And as believers... We come into an intimate relationship with with God. We come into an intimate relationship with Jesus. And between that intimate relationship, out of that intimate relationship becomes fruit. And people understand our connection with him because of the fruit it bears. We got a new baby. We call him Baby Billups. (laughs) He does have a name, but we call him Baby Billups here. Baby Billups is the fruit of the relationship of the intimate relationship that me and my wife had. You don't have to question what me and my wife did because now you see the fruit of our intimacy. It's an, you don't have to wonder what went down. You can see the fruit of it. You can see that we've been connected based on the fruit that has come into the world. And so as believers, when we're intimate with Jesus, we're intimate with his word, we're intimate with God. There's something that comes out of our life that is fruit where the critics may say, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if you're truly a Christian. I don't know if you really have connection with the Lord. Well, look, here's the fruit of our relationship. All I got to do is point. And not only do I point, it makes a sound of its own. Baby Billups cries and makes his presence known. And it's come from the intimacy that me and my wife share. Don't argue. Just point. Somebody say just point. When the critics come to you, just point. Just point to what the Lord has done. Even though you're still believing him for more, just point to what the Lord has already done. Somebody say it's there. Is there. They might come back and say, I don't see it. But you ain't got to see it. It's there because I know it's there. Because the Lord put it there and I'm pointing to where it is. Somebody say, it's there. And as I, I, the lessons that I've learned from mothers is that sometimes when you send somebody to go look for something, they come back and you know it's there, but they don't see it. You got to ask them the question, do you want to find it? Sometimes I had kids come back and be like, listen, I know it's in there because I laid it out. I learned from your mother 
I know the belt is in there. My question to you is, do you want to find it? Or did you just go into the room and go, oh, I don't see it. It just turned around and went out. Or did you actually look for it? Do you want to find it? Do you want to see it? Do you want, did you go in there with a purpose to find it? Or you just went in there to check the box? Because if you just went in there to check the box and you didn't really look for it, I don't even know if you want to find it. I asked somebody, do you want to find it? Because verse 26 tells us, but you don't believe because you're not my sheep. Let's break that down. What this is saying is they had no interest in listening because they had no interest in being his sheep. John 6, says this, the father is the one who sent me. No one can come to me unless the father draws him to me and I will raise that person up on the last day. Sometimes in life, we don't see it because we don't want to see it. Oh, that's good. Sometimes we don't see it because we don't want to see it. For if we were to actually see it, then it would bring responsibility to us to make a decision to be obedient or go about it our own way. How we do it. Lord, show me the path that you have for me. Lord, speak to my heart. And then he starts speaking. You go, oh, not, not that. Not that. That's not really what I wanted. Uh -huh. What I actually meant was I want to have this spiritual moment so I can check the box. And then I want to tell you everything that I want to do. And Lord, I want you to bless it. I want you to put favor on it. I want you to give me the job that I want. I want you to open up the door that I want. I want you to do these things that I want. My prayer is not necessarily thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's more like my will, my kingdom come, my will be done, not yours. Um, <laughs> we'll do some of your stuff, but I really want to do my stuff. And that's what I really want. And so I'm going to go into the room. I'm going to go into my prayer closet, but I'm not going to go into the room to actually find what, what you want me to find. I'm just going to go in there so that you can, so I can say that I went in there and then I couldn't find it. So I just did my own thing. For if you wanted to see it, you could really see it. But sometimes we don't see it because we don't want to see it. I wish somebody would get free and say amen. That we really don't want to hear him because I don't know what he's going to say. I really want to have a conversation, but I want the conversation to go how I want it to go. And to have your presence in my life without your preference. I'm going to say that again. We want to have God's presence in our life, but not his preference. Which simply means that I want you to be around, but I don't want you to say something that I don't want to do. And I don't want to be disrespectful and not do what you told me I should do. Therefore, I'll come into the room, but I won't really spend the time and open the door to be vulnerable to the fact that you can truly speak to my heart. I won't open the door all the way. I'll crack and take a peek and then close it up. I ain't going to stay too long because then you're going to start asking me to do stuff. I wish somebody would have to say amen and get free. I ain't going to stay at the house too long. Because then you're going to have me cutting grass. Then you're going to have me washing dishes. Then you're going to have me doing this. So you're going to have me doing that. I'll come visit for a second, but when the conversation starts getting deep, it's time for me to go. When you start having preferences about how I should live my life, it's time for me to back up. When you really start, come on, some others in here is like, yeah, my son called me, my daughter called me, but when it comes time for me to give advice, then they start being like, oh, I got to go, mom. Somebody calling me. I got I to get on. I got to get off. I got to go. Yeah, because when it gets to the place where you become vulnerable to the conversation, they 
really don't really want to hear all that. They just came to get what they wanted to get and then move on. I wish some mothers would say amen. And the fact that sometimes they call to get what they want, not necessarily what you have to offer, even though you know what you have to offer is better than what they want and it's what they really, really need, but they won't stay around long enough because they want your presence, but not necessarily your preference and the plan that you have for them. So they move out the way. And they keep their visitation very limited. But it's the same thing we do to the Lord. I praise you. But when you start speaking to my heart, oh, I got to go handle something else. I worship you. But when you start stepping on my toes and start giving me some changes I need to make, I don't know how I feel about that. Pastor P, preaching good. Amen. But we got to get to a place where we realize, do I want to see it? Do I want to relinquish my authority to the place that I say your will, not my will be done? Do I want to relinquish my will to the place that says if the cross is a part of your will, I'm willing to be on it? Will I relinquish to the place where if discomfort is a part of the plan, I'll embrace it like it's a blessing. Do I want to see it? That's the question. Because the reason they didn't believe is because they had no interest in listening because they had no interest in being his sheep. They were looking for a debate not an invitation. They found him, but they were not interested in being his sheep. They were interested in finding a reason to stone him. We have to want to hear him, not based on the result of what could happen, but simply based on the desire to be obedient to his word the desire to be obedient to his word. We're almost done, y'all. Can you look at somebody and say, listen to me. Listen to me. Because sometimes I send kids in the room to go get stuff, and they go, I don't think it's in there. It's there. Then they come back, I don't see it. Do you want to find it? And come back, I don't see it. Listen to me. Listen to me. Somebody say, listen to me. Verse 27 says this, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Don't underestimate the value in his voice. Because in his voice, you will find direction and clarity and wisdom, and love, and power, and grace, and endurance, and strength. It is his voice that we don't value enough. To keep his voice in our life, to value time to where he can just speak to us. We value the time of praying to him. We value the time of worshiping. We value the time, but we got to value his voice to where he can speak back. Once again, to allow his preference to become our preference and not just be in his presence, but not allow him to speak to our heart. To where we relinquish our will to the place that he can speak to us. Though we appreciate the miracles, the open doors, the blessing and how he favors us. And, but we got to remember that we got to value his voice. That is not just about his hand and what he can do for us, but value what he has to say to us, the direction he has to give. If he's talking to you, if he's revealing things to you, if he's allowing you to understand, then that is an opportunity that you should not take for granted. 
If you hear his voice and you understand what he's calling you to, he's calling you, he's pulling you, he's encouraging you, he's building you up. You like a light bulb went off. I actually understand this. I don't really understand how I went from not understanding preaching to now I'm hearing this word and this word is so clear to me and I can see now that he's taking the scales off my eyes. He's allowing me to process and understand that's an invitation. It's not just me talking, but you're hearing his voice. The reason you know it's different is because you listen to preachers before, but you ain't hear it this way. It wasn't this clear. You didn't have this opportunity to say, look, I know my life needs to be different. I didn't have this opportunity to say, I know that I can, I need to change. I know that I need to step up in a different way. I know that he's calling me. I know that my life has purpose. I understand now in a different way. And when you understand in a different way, you need to realize that his voice is speaking to you. His voice is calling you. His voice is pulling you. His voice is letting you have this invitation and you need to make sure that you don't miss this opportunity because it's not all the time that you can hear his voice and understand what he's saying to you and that you have this clarity. This is an opportunity. This is an invitation that the Lord is speaking to you to a place where you are clear in the fact of what you are hearing. He said, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. They listen and they follow me. Make it a point to sit with his voice, to hear him. And Genesis says that the voice of the Lord walked in the garden and they knew that he would come back every day and walk with him. Like we need to have that consistency that we sit with him, that we walk with him, that we commune with him, that we remember him, that we value the silence that we create so that he can fill it with his voice. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, that I may hear you. And we got to make it a point to understand that he will direct our path if we listen and value and are obedient to what he tells us. Oh, man. He will direct our path if we are obedient to what he tells us. But we must trust that everything that we need is on the path. Oh, man, there's a bunch of different ways to get from here to California. But the path that he has us on, we must stay obedient to that path and realize, though, there are a bunch of ways to get there. They're significant about the way that he told me to go. And everything that I need is along this path. And I won't take a detour. I won't get off the path that he's called me to because there's specific things on this path that I need to see. There's specific things on this path that I need to make connection with. There are specific things on this path that will cause me to be safe. There are specific things on this path that I need to connect with. There are specific things on this path to my destiny. And though it may not be the path everybody took, every step of the journey was significant. I need to sit with his voice so that I know what path to take, what college to go to, what job to take, what career enhancement opportunity I need to pursue, how I'm supposed to run my business, what, contra- what contract am I supposed to go after, how I'm supposed to set up my kids for the future. Though the path may not look like everybody else's path and I'm not slighting them for the way they went, I got to move out of the voice of the Lord that's leading and guiding me and say, go this way, go that way. Because though there are many ways to get there, the path that he has me on is significant because everything I need is on the path. The challenge is when you start looking and seeing the destination and he has you on the path. Do you give up the path for the destination or do you stay on the path to be obedient to his voice? You got to value his voice. Because when you start to see the destination, many people abandon the path that they are on because they see the destination. But what I found is that it's not just about the definition, about just, it's not just about the destination, but it's about the path and the journey that you are on. And I got to make sure that I value his voice more than the destination. I got to value his voice more than the blessing. I got to value his voice more than the return. I got to value his voice more than what I want. If he says to hold up right here, I need to hold up right here, even though I really want to see the result, even though I want to see the return on investment, I got to make sure that I hear his voice and I'm so tuned to his voice that I'll stay right here, even though I want to go over there. You ever seen the dog that's so disciplined that he sits there? He's like, hey, I really want to go chase that ball. I really want to go eat. But the master said that I'm supposed 
supposed to stand right here right now. I'm supposed to sit right here right now. And he sits and you can tell on the inside that he wants to go, but he's just waiting on the word. He got the energy to go. He got the, the focus to go. He got the strength to go. He got the endurance to go. But his obedience is what's, uh, what's so amazing. His obedience is what gains attention. It's obedience that sets him up. It's his obedience and his discipline that sets him apart from other dogs because he'll sit and you know that the instinct of the dog is the fact that he's supposed to go off and chase. But the reason that he's sitting and the fact that he's sitting makes him so uh, outstanding, makes him so amazing is the fact that he can sit because you know that truthfully he wants to go right now and you know that he has the ability to go. But because he values the master's voice so much, he just stays right there and he sits right there and he waits for the master to say go. And when the master says go, he takes off and he goes and he goes in obedience. And therefore, since he goes in obedience, there provision that comes for him outside of just the thing he was going after. The obedience, the open doors, the influence that he has is great because of his obedience to the master. He just a dog, but he an obedient dog. And because he's obedient, that makes him significant. Because he's obedient, that opens doors. Because he's obedient, that impacts other lives. Because he's obedient, it honors the master. Because he's obedient, because he's obedient to his master's voice. I don't see it. Listen to me. It's over there. Because there may be some details when you come back to listen to me that will illuminate where the thing is that you were looking for. Dad, I went in the room and I don't see it. Listen to me. If you look right beside the bookcase, there it is. And he walks back into the room, looks beside the bookcase, and sees what has been in plain sight because his ear was tuned to listen. And he actually wanted to find what he was looking for or sent to get. And he realized that if the father sent me, it's there. And he sees what was in plain sight that he couldn't see before. God's purpose for your life is in plain sight. God's plan for your life is in plain sight. It's within reach. And he has prepared it for you. I want you to really understand that. Is that it's in plain sight. And sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes we don't realize it. Sometimes we don't want to see it. Sometimes we don't want to grab it. Sometimes we, we are so, we're, we're standing in the room, but we can't see what's in plain sight because there were some directions that we needed to get listening to him. And because we haven't gone back to listen to him, we're standing in the room, but we don't see it to be able to engage it, to handle it, to respond to it because we haven't got the clarity and the specifics of where it is in the room. There are some people who are in the room. You're in the church. You're in the organization. You're in the business. You're in the the parenting You're in the school, you're in the moment, and you, you're there, and you want to see it, but you've been looking out of your own strength and your own capability and your own perspective and your own intelligence, and you're in the room, but you haven't grabbed hold to the fullness of the purpose that God has for you. And you realize that you're here. You realize that you're close and you realize that it's accessible, but you just can't find it. You really don't see it. You really haven't grasped it. You're around it. It's like you know it's there, but you just really haven't stepped into 
it. And you can't really describe what it is, but you know that God has promised it to you. You you know that when you see it, when you handle it, when you step into it, when you do it, you know that you're going to be able to know what it is, but you really can't get it yet. And it's because you stepped into the room because God told you to step into the room, but you didn't go back to listen to him for the specifics of why you're in the room or what you're specifically looking for or where to find it or how to function in it. And he says, your devotional and your love for me got you in the room, but it's that same devotional and that love and that worship and sitting and letting me speak to you that's going to let you identify what you need to pick up in the room. You're standing in the room like a kid looking around and saying, my dad told me that it's here. I just, I don't see it. It's here. I know it's here. I know it's here because he told me it's here, but I don't see it. And he said, the last step is listen to me. Come back to me. I put you in the room, but I need for you to listen to me so that you can understand where you need to look. I need for you to look right there. I need for you to do this right here. I need for you to surrender right here. I need for you to fast like this. I need for you to pray like this. I need you to say these words. I need you to call this person. I need you to develop this program. I need you to implement this structure. I need for you to deal with this person. I need for you to do this thing. I need for you to open up this project. I need for you to open up this wing of the business. I need for you to rebrand like this this and he will begin to speak to you and download into you specifically what you need to do in this moment and begin to maximize the room that you are in. God is doing something great on the inside of you and it's in plain sight so much so that other people can see it but you can't see it because you got to listen to him. I got to listen to him. It's there. I don't see it and he says it's there. I put you in it. I prepared it. I know it's there. I don't see it, God. Do you want to see it? Or are you scared of success? Is there a fear of failure? Is there something on the inside of you that says, if I relinquish this, he could change my whole life around. And I don't know if I'm ready for that at this point in my life. Do you want to see it? The answer is yes. Listen to me. I know you got a degree. I know you've been at this for a long time. I know that you 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 got a plan and a picture of it yourself. But will you listen to me and do it the way I called you to do it? Will you listen to me and flow how I called you to flow? Will you listen to me? and do it the way I designed it. Listen to me. Because you can't find it because you ain't listening. You over, you way on the left side of the room and it's on the right side of the room and I put it on the right side of the room and I told you to go on the right side of the room but you're not listening to me. I need for you to listen. Listen to me. Somebody said, listen to me. God is calling us back to a place where we'll listen to him, where we'll value the quiet time with him, that he may guide our footsteps, direct our path. And we got to value it. Say, Lord, lead me, guide me in your truth. Father, I thank you and I bless your name for those who are listening right now with the heart to listen. They may not see it all the way, but Lord, allow them to see it. Allow them to see how to parent well. Allow them to see it that's in their life. Allow them to see the business moves to make. Allow them to see how to be disciple makers. Allow them to see how to impact lives. Allow them to see how to navigate this season of life that they are in. Show me, Lord. Lead me, guide me in your truth. If you're watching on here, you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart and say, I realize that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, that no man comes to the Father except by him and you want to accept him into your heart because of what he has done for you on Calvary, dying on the cross for you, raising up on the third day with all power in his hands and seated at the right hand of the Father right now, making intercessions for us. 
and you want to accept that Jesus in your heart and start the journey of following him and make this day a marker, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. It says, Dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan, make my salvation real to me, and lead me by your Holy Spirit. If you prayed that prayer today, you have prayed the best prayer that you could pray. And God's going to do great things in your life. I want to pray for some other folks before I can say amen. Lord, I thank you for those who are here who need healing in their body. Heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Continue to increase their health now in a great way in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up those who are going through destru destructive cycles, God. We ask that you break the power of those cycles off their life. That they be able to flow in your truth and be able to be restored back to where you've called them to be. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, the church said, amen, amen. Can we bless the Lord? God is good. God is faithful. And I'm excited for what he has done. Listen, if you have said that prayer today and you know that today really impacted your heart, we would love for you to email us. You can also text us at REL Church at 54244, REL Church. 54244. If you send Rail Church, the word Rail Church to 54244, it will start the conversation and we'll be able to connect with you, send you messages back and we'll be able to connect. You can also email us at railchurch at gmail.com. You can text me directly. That number is popping up on the screen there. And so we're excited for what God is doing and continue to do. He continues to, to bless us, continues to open doors that no man can close, continues to shut doors that no man can open. He continues to do great things. Relevant is excited about what God is doing in this season. Listen, we're about to turn eight years old. We're excited about that. We're excited about at the end of the month, there's a day of change. We're excited about that. We're excited about baptisms happening in June. We're excited about that. We're excited about the great things that continue to unfold as God continues to build his church. Those are just a few of the things that are happening around here. Blessing the lives of those in our community. The, the, the influence and impact that God has caused Relevant to have amongst the community has been awesome and grand. The fact that there are people all over the globe that gets impacted from this ministry because of what God is doing and he allows us and invites us to give to be a part of that. So we just encourage you to give as God leads you to give and so into the ministry. We believe that God is doing great things. You can follow the prompts that are up on the screen right now and so into the ministry. We're excited for what God is doing and what he continues to do. God is amazing. So amazing. So amazing. And he invites us to so into the ministry to be a part of what he's doing. Listen, he is relevant. You are relevant. We are relevant. And together we make impact for the kingdom. We're excited to see you next week. We would love for you to have you in person. If not, you can join us on the Zoom at 10. And you can do that by getting to our website. That's at the 10 o'clock service. And so we would love to have you on the screen with us in the sanctuary. God is doing great things. Continue to keep your hand in his hands and listen to his voice. It's there if you want to see it and if you listen to him. God bless you.